A few things have changed. The format is a little different thanks to uh, Stephen uh, for his help. Uh, I'll just run through all the features real quickly just in case something has changed. Um, the left-hand margin has Bob's complete hierarchy. So all of the topics, uh, parent-child relationships. Um, we look at, for example, where's frameworks? Uh, I think that was developers, wasn't it? Oh, reference. Okay, yeah. Reference, yeah. 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 Um, all the children of frameworks show up in the next column, and what happens is the um, the links, the pages show up in the columns immediately following. Hovering on a link gives you the corresponding page. Uh, in addition to Bob's hierarchy, we have the free floating tags. So there are several hundred of these. They're divided up into groups of 15. So for example, under efficiency with an ellipsis after it, we've got the efficiency topic as well as embedding video in J Labs and so on. Um, most of these topics, these free floating tags have just a couple of pages associated with them. And if you hover, they'll come up just like the other pages do. Uh, in addition to that, we've got the forums, so J Programming, J General, J Beta, and so on. Um, so if you look at, say, J Programming, it starts out with the most recent month and year, April of 2023 in this case. Um, hovering over a subject gives you all of the people who posted to that uh, thread. Uh, and again, hovering over a uh, over an item will load the corresponding page. In this case, the page is a post from the forum. Um, on top of that, there's search. So I've got a couple of searches in place now for Dyadic Transpose, WD Message Box, and FTP. But you can add additional searches, say um, random fixed seed, let's say. So that'll come up. Your search results, um, which may be forum results. So J programming, J general, and J forum all have um, items, or maybe results from the wiki, in which case, unsurprisingly, the top item that comes up is query dot uh, from the from Nuvoke. Um, one of the things that's important is that we've got uh, a mechanism because we are hover based rather than click based and for reasons having to do with web view not reporting mouse move events yet all that is going to be fixed if you do want to interact with a page uh, so for example uh, fix let's say from nuvoke if you click you lock down all the mouse move processing for three seconds that gives you a chance to get your mouse over to the browser and then you can interact with the browser directly um, we'll be fixing that as soon as mouse move events are reported by the, the web view control. We won't need to do the click to lock anymore. Uh, and that's it for the demo. Any questions or comments on any of that? Uh, I'd sent a email to Bill asking him when he thought that update might happen for JQT. If I had to guess, I think it won't, I don't think they'll update it for 9.4. They might, but they will definitely update for 9.5. And I don't really know, I haven't had an answer back when they would do that. I know right. they update with the final release, but I think they probably should try and update a little ahead of that. That would be nice for us. And if they did, and we did deliver this as a standalone application, we could just include the 9.5 binaries or 9.05 binaries um and that would take care of the problem i think if we did it as an add-on we'd have a problem but if we do it as a standalone and include our own binaries then i think everything should be fine yeah the only issue with that would be the 9.5 is a beta so at some point we'll want to <laughs> adjust to whatever changes they're making but i mean well, ideally I mean, they'll, they'll they'll do it to 9.4 and then we can use the working the commercial version of 9.4 that, that would be great but again because it's a standalone i don't think i'd object to shipping beta binaries initially 
uh, with the expectation okay. we'd be switching over to the release binaries when they finally come out. Yeah, I guess I that's, that's right, because you'd never actually be using J through this, would you? You'd only be using it yeah. as a search. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, Bob, you had raised um, the possibility that we should revisit or continue to visit the forums user experience, which I am definitely sympathetic to. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a tough one. <laughs> it is a tough one. Do you yeah, have any yeah. thoughts? Uh, on on this, and Devin, I should um, explain something here, and, and that is that um, because we're hover based, mm -hmm. and because we wanted to include the years and the months um, uh, in such a way as to give a left to right flow as you with the mouse as you go from a forum to a year to a month, the years and the months need to get out of the way. So that if you do select J programming, which defaults to today, April of 2023, and you see something that you're interested in, you need to be able to get over to it without inadvertently selecting another year and another month. So that's why they're dancing around in what might look like an unpleasant fashion. Uh, it actually, I mean, I wrote it, but I don't think it's too bad. Uh, on the other hand, I also don't think that this is necessarily the final um, form that this this might take. So I'm definitely open to the idea of of making changes, and I'm happy to experiment. But I, I could use some suggestions. Hmm. So Bob, what what makes you hesitate about the current experience? Well, I have in mind. Well, I, I, I've got I've got in mind something I'd like to do. I actually I'd like to hear Devin's take on it first, just because that's fresh eyes, and I know I've I've spent a lot of time talking back and forth with you about it. I'm I'm just wondering, is there any way to put the date stuff across the top or something so you're not moving over? That's it? That's interesting. That's where it started. Yeah. Um, and the the idea there is that with a hover based interface, you can put controls around a central area. And that way you can always touch the edges without worrying about inadvertently touching something else. So your all your control points are uh, nicely out of the way. And Bob was Bob wanted a left to right flow. Bob, correct mm -hmm. me if I'm misrepresenting you here. Um, and this was the only way I could think of to get a, a left to right flow. And there is, I think, a lot to be said for not having to dance around the edges. Uh, for instead being able to say, yeah, I'm here and now I want 2021 and I want August and that's that's what I want and that's what I'm going to get. Um, there's less mouse movement. You don't need to you don't need to cover as much territory. If you were really literally using a mouse, that wouldn't matter so much. It's very easy to move a mouse a, a great distance. A touchpad that's not as true. I'm using a touchpad and I find it annoying to have to move a mouse a great distance. So I, I was quite sympathetic to. Um, to those concerns and, and was happy to, to build a left to right style interface. Although again, it does have the dates dancing around. So they, they're getting out of your way there? Is that why there's a gap? That's exactly right. Okay. So it just opens up a gap equivalent to where you are on the, the left there. Exactly. The right, it looks like. Yeah. But once you're in, the date area, they're, they become the years become stationary. The months get out of the way as you select a year. Uh, but if you're in the months column, the months are stationary, and you're able to select them. So it actually it looks odd, but much to my surprise, it actually works. I think pretty well. Mm -hmm. You could argue uh, it looks important. it looks pretty useful. Okay. One of the reasons I was looking at uh, running left to right here in this case was because if you put those months and days at the top, it's really easy to hit um, the uh, postings, the threads on the way up to them. So you come across and as soon as you come across into that zone, now you're over top of postings and your, your display is changing as you move up to the date. Mm-hmm. And that's that's why I was kind of moving towards yeah. left to right. 
That, well, the dancing, true, the dancing around looks like something you could get used to once you, if you understand it, I think. It's, okay. That's you know, acceptable. Yeah, that would be the big thing. I think people, otherwise people are going to, why is it doing that? Yeah. Right. It's not obvious at first, but then when you understand, it makes sense. Okay, so the idea I have is what you've got in your leftmost table of contents there is what I think is really an ideal format. You move up and down that green bar and the zoom follows you so you can see what you're looking at. And then as you move across into the white, the way after and thank you for uh putting up the head to head because i think raul got a much better sense of what what you can do when you uh when you have the dead space you can move up and down that white bar very easily without having things jump around yeah that i i'm actually used to this now i was not enamored of it initially but i'm i think i like it too Devin, i should explain there were actually four different approaches to managing this, uh, this scroller here, um, involving at one point two-fingered scrolling in order to scroll that we don't do that anymore. Uh, this is just mouse hovering. That's all that's happening here. Mm -hmm. And we were, Raul and, um, and I and uh, Bob were going back and forth on what was the optimal way, the optimal interaction. So I put together a version that had a little drop down with four different interaction options mm. and they picked each one in turn, tried them out. And thank God the two of them agreed <laughs> on what the best one was. Um, so, and I, I, I went along with it and I, I'm now glad that I did. Um, but good. Okay. Yeah. Bob, I'm glad you still like it. That's, that's excellent. And so what I like it so much. Yes, now, but you want to change it. No, no, no. I don't want to <laughs> change that. That's what I think we should be doing for the forums as well. But that would mean separating the months and the years on the forum strip from the display. That's the one change that you would need to do. So it becomes independent. Well, you need to peel back a layer of detail on that. I, I'm, I'm not tracking. Okay. So when you're, uh, you've got the, your leftmost table of contents where your Zoom works and you can move up and down that white strip without having things move around. We go over to the next, what looks to be a separate strip, but it's not. It's a column, but it's all one isograph, right? Okay. Yes, it is, in fact. So what I would, what I'm proposing is that first strip becomes a separate isograph. And it works the same way as your le the one to the left. Except that in this case, you've got months and years. Or sorry, yeah, months and years down a strip, down a strip, and you can move up and down that, zooming it, and then oh, you have a white strip next to it, so you can go right up to wherever you want before you go across, and you've got the same language with both those strips. Yeah, I take your point. So, so in fact, and, and maybe I'm getting ahead of you here, in, in which case I apologize, but what you're suggesting is a single linear list, 2023. December, January, excuse me. Yeah, December, November, October, September, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And it would have the same kind of uh, lens effect where there'd be a zoomed area. Yeah. Uh, how interesting. I think that's probably right. I think that's probably right. And then you'd have that white strip next to it, the same as the first one, so that you can get up and down without yes. coming yes. across. Yeah. Right. No, that's not a problem. Yeah, yeah, that feels right. That feels right. The only thing that's a little dicey compared to the current implementation is uh, that you couldn't help but crash into a date as you're moving to the right. And in so doing, you know, you, you see something you're interested in, or you, get, you hop onto J General. It shows April of 2023, and the JD bugger bug is visible there, and you're interested in that. But if I've got um, a lens list over here, then you're going to wind up hitting, you know, January of 2023 on your yeah. way over. And, but that's that's where that white strip comes in, is you can move up and down that without 
without affecting anything. You've got to go across. Yeah. The, there's no way to avoid going across the green stripe. Uh, well, no, you can. You can go up and you can go up to 23 April, where where it's highlighted. You can oh, go I up. see. Go all the way over yeah. and down and, and down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, sure does everything have that. dates, or is it just the forums? Just the forums. Okay. Because I was wondering, maybe if you switch the date column to the far left, you wouldn't have the problem running into it accidentally. Oh, I see. That's interesting. Uh, but then you've got the problem that when you go to the far left to hit a date, you'll wind right. up hitting a forum that maybe you're not interested in. I see. So it's the opposite problem. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's it's just it's just hover-based interfaces create this dilemma mm -hmm. for you all the time. I mean, maybe it's not. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's easy enough to recover. Uh, if you wanted 2023, you could just move up. Yeah. And I think because it's using the same language as, as the leftmost one, I think people would catch on to that pretty quick. Oh, I, I, I think there's no question about that. My The objection I'm, I've spent probably more time on than I should have is definitely a minor one. Um, I think that... Inadvert, not it wouldn't even be inadvertent. It would be very obvious what you were doing. You were uh, hitting January on your way over, or hitting September on your way over. Um, but it would be so easy to recover that maybe that wouldn't matter very much. Yeah, I think Bob, your point about keeping the language the same is a compelling one. Um, the, the, the notion of having a hierarchy, uh, an outline, I should say, uh, of having the children of a node in the outline that is the subtree of an, of an entry in the outline show up in the column immediately to the right, and then having it, too, be a lens-based um, scroll field, uh, keeping the language consistent as consistent as we can for all the different information displays we have, I think that's a compelling argument. Why don't I? Yeah, why don't I go ahead and do that? And, and you might pick up a little bit of functionality too by separating those two uh, isographs. No, that um, that's a technical detail that uh, isn't doesn't actually help or hurt me. Um, and, and in fact, actually, technically, there's some value to keeping a single isograph. It okay. means they don't need multiple um, massive end handlers. Yeah, that's true. And and but the the I, uh, the thing I found neat when I when I was I did that demo for you um, yeah. was that you can actually have um, isographs completely hidden. They're there, but they're completely hidden. And then you hover over something, and that event can actually trigger them to appear. Yeah, it's it's nifty, but it's not necessary in this case. Uh, I'm perfectly content to have a single large surface on which I I uh, render what look like independent controls. That that does simplify my life. Right, uh, but what I'm saying is, in the case of the forum, you you'd end up having a separate extra isograph. It would only show up for forum. You could do that, but it's additional complexity for okay. no benefit I'm able to figure out. I mean, I can already get that effect now, you know, depending on what it is you you choose to select. I'm showing very different things to the right, and it's all a single big isograph control. Right, but but that that, that next column, like I I can see that with, with with when you're when you're running through the uh, the structure of the wiki, absolutely I can see that. But when you go to the forums, I think you want that next column independent of your. I'm not seeing why. I want it to look independent. Okay. But an implementation detail. Okay, so you're saying you can you can make it look independent, uh, react independently. And it it won't affect that next column over. You basically won't change what's displayed as you move up and down. Okay. Well, no. I mean, it. it well, I mean, what will happen is you'll pick J General, let's right. say. Yeah. And there'll be years and months in a single column. Yeah. And as you select a month, 
you won't select years because there's no such thing as 2023 really you'll only be selecting months yeah but as you select a month the just as is happening now the available set of threads over on the right will change so the, okay. the behavior will be very similar to what you're seeing here yeah it's just that the format of this particular column will will be identical to the format of the far left or yeah basically the far left and you can do that zoom effect just just isolating on that one part of the isograph sure um, yeah okay yeah i don't yeah here's an example so if you go to reference right yeah you're right absolutely yeah yeah so it would be just that same idea as this one right exactly yeah yeah all right i think that's good i, I will miss the dancing months and years <laughs> I think that's sort of cute. But maybe it's too sweet. <laughs> Keep that one in your back pocket. You never know when you yeah, might need it again. The magic mm -hmm. of source control. It'll always be there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, it's, it seems easy to get used to. And if you oh, understand uh, it, it's not too. Yeah. And Raul's yeah, up here. I agree with you, but I, I think that um, Bob's argument about keeping the language as consistent as the, the user experience language right. as consistent as possible, that I find, I do find that compelling. So let's at least give it a try, and we can always revert if we decide we uh, we prefer the dancing months. Raul, right. do you have any comments on uh, on the interface? I'm not sure when you came in. Um, yeah, just a few minutes ago, I, I was I lost track of time. Um, I don't have any specific comments yet. Um, uh, go ahead. Okay. Because uh, what we were just saying was that we'll, we're looking to replicate what we've got on the leftmost on the next column over for the yeah. months, just I for the that's forms. That's a good idea. I think yeah. that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, were there any other areas that you wanted to get? I know um, you're looking at at, at uh, design a bit, and I've got a call out to Stephen, a text out to Stephen. I haven't heard back from him. That's uh, the nature of children. Yes. Yes, right. it is. Yeah. <laughs> you want them to be independent, and that means they're independent. So I'll uh, I'll text them again probably tomorrow to see whether I can get something else out of them. You know, sometime over the weekend maybe. That's very just, just, Thank just you. well. I mean, he. I think he's intrigued a little bit by it too. So I don't right. think it's too much effort, and um, I, I think he'll be interested to see what we've come up with based on his previous suggestions. I hope so. Yeah, well, and what were the? Uh, there was a couple of other things I saw. I'm just trying to remember. I really like some of what you've done with some of the hierarchies, you know, with the bold and the and the non bold yeah. to separate them. I think that works really well. That's what I'm hoping Stephen will be able to comment on and perhaps improve. Yeah, I feel like um, the last the the first round we did with him, which is so far the only round, he was giving sort of uh, basic fundamental broad advice which was very helpful but i'm thinking now maybe there might be tweaks that he can offer us that would also be would also be interesting um, um ed is, is for something looking ahead yeah i assume this whole display is fairly intertwined with the structure of the j wiki it is deeply reflective of the structure of the j wiki yes right i'm wondering how how plausible or possible it is to to sort of separate that out let's say i really like this interface and i want to use it on another thing entirely <laughs> pretty easy i think um yeah. it's in the sense that the, the the way it works is it's it's i've got a crawler that crawls the wiki and it produces a sql -like database that's got the whole category hierarchy mm -hmm. and for every node in the category hierarchy it's got a set of associated web pages mm. so for example uh, so so uh, I, I would just i want to use this as something else so it would be up to me to build the database build the so, crawler for whatever um this crawler is very dependent on the jwiki's implementation so you need a, you need to build your crawler and mm -hmm. you need to create a sqlite database um that reflected the structure of whatever uh website you were interested in but then, yeah, you should be able, I'm, I'm going to say mm -hmm. this and it'll turn out to be wrong, but maybe it'll be 90% true. Yeah, you should probably be able to use the client browser code against that database pretty easily. Yeah, well, I, I was thinking of even for something not web-based, like I have my enormous 
collection of photos here. Oh, you know, it might be nice well, to have a different way idea. to run around on uh, them. And that would just be on my own hard disk or whatever. Sure, sure. Um, I'd be happy to talk to you about that uh, as a separate exercise. But uh, yeah, I don't think that would be impossible. I actually did something like this for the uh, Internet Movie Database at one mm. point where I had a lot of photographs popping up and, and uh, uh, you know, browsing them and searching and so on. So it's it's an entirely feasible thing to do. OK, well, I, I think we should get it uh, more solidified before we oh, think about I, how to expand it. But absolutely. Yeah. And speaking of solidified, I have started to think a little more seriously about um, deployment. Uh, mm -hmm. On which topic, Raul, thank you for responding to my two emails. I very much appreciate that. Yeah. Um, the um, Basically, the, the, the main, I mean, there are a couple of problems. One is distributing the standalone code, which I assume is a solved problem in the J ecosystem. And then the second problem is distributing the regularly updated database that reflects the contents of the wiki, the evolving contents of the wiki. Mm -hmm. And for the latter, I had assumed that what we would would do uh, was I'd have a crawler that would produce a database file. I would upload it to the wiki or to somewhere on jsoftware.com. Uh, and then ideally, uh, the client code, the standalone client code could check that at launch or periodically. And without downloading the eight megabytes worth of data, which strikes me as a little too much to download on spec, um, could check in place to see whether there was a more recent version of the database sitting up on the server. Mm -hmm. Did you say eight oh, megabytes? Me. Sorry? How many megabytes did you say? Eight megabytes. Eight. I mean, that doesn't sound like a lot in today's world, but, but it would uh, be nice to have it centralized yeah. somewhere where the updates would happen. Right. And yeah. what I what I don't want to do is to have to retrieve the file in question right. to see and then be able to check the date. Right. Row, I think the code that you kindly sent me does that. It looked to me like it actually retrieved the file and then did some date checking. And I, I could be misinterpreting. What what I'm doing is retrieving the, I that that code was assuming that the file is on the wiki. And what it does is it retrieves the wiki page for that file and pulls the data off of that. There might be another way, and after thinking about that just now, there's another way that I might be able to check for that wouldn't be specific to, to having the file on the wiki. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll look into that after the, after we're out of here. You're very kind, I'd appreciate that. Um, um, and, uh, Bob, as, yeah, sorry, go ahead. I was As for distribution, all of the J add-ons are actually hosted on GitHub. And right. the way that it works is you update that GitHub repository and it immediately is updated in as far as the um, Pac-Man is concerned. So um, it, it, if, you know, if I've, I've it, and several times gone in and I found a bug in a, in an add-on, I make a change to the IJS file and update that on GitHub. And I also update the manifest to change the version. And at that point it shows up. I, I just go to J with, I don't, I don't, talk to anybody i just go over to my j session and i ha go into pacman i see that that um that thing's updated and it'll pull a fresh copy if i you know using normal pacman mechanisms so we had a fragment of a conversation i think before you came on um i'm not sure that we're going to be able to deliver this as an add-on only because one of the things we want to do is get away from get away from having to click and lock in order to make it possible to move over to the browser and interact with it. How would that, want... that Sorry? I, don't do with, I don't see what that has to do with add-ons. <laughs> oh, allow me to explain. Uh, what it has to do with add-ons is the only way that I've been able to figure out for us to get away from click and lock uh, is to get web is to get mouse events off the web view. And that's mm -hmm. coming, but uh, it is not available yet. So my guess was that we'd have to take the 905 binaries, which are the only ones that will have, or the 905 version of JQT, which is the only one that'll have a web view that reports its mouse events uh, and use that. And with that assumption in mind, I thought, well, you know, add-ons aren't gonna work because we don't know what binaries people are going to be using. 
we're going to have to be able to supply our own binaries. And the only way to do that is with a standalone a standalone packaging. Now, well, you, you, add-ons have a, a field for saying which version of the binaries they run on. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, and will and will it warn you automatically if you try and run with the wrong binary? It, it won't even show up in Pac-Man if you oh, show the up. older older versions of J. Oh. Oh. That right. said, it might be the case since since the since the JQT binary is independent of the um, J console binary, you know the J JDLL. I'm not. You know, once they get once they once they've figured out what they want to do with JQT, it might might be able to be um, since it's it's essentially distributed as an add-on itself, sort of. It um it might be able to show up on J nine four. I I don't know about that, but it's it's a possibility. I think. All right. Well, Bob, you sent a note to Bill, I believe. Yeah, I did. All right, so maybe when he gets back to us, we'll have enough additional information that we can have a, a more directed conversation about this. I, I suggest we just defer it for now. Yeah, and and he, I mean, they, they'll be more aware. They may know of ways to um, update JQT um, in ways that, um, I just haven't seen them update JQT without doing it during a beta before. So in other words, when the beta switch over, switches over, that's when the JQT version switches over. But I don't really actually see a reason they couldn't do that in for, say, 9.4, in which case you wouldn't have to go to a beta to have people use this. They could actually use it off of commercial copy. It depends on the API between the, the console and JQT. If that has to change, then you get a lock-in. If it doesn't have to change, then you don't. Mm, okay. Although there's also the whole distribution process, so I don't. And so when Bill said that there's a that's a bug in 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 WebView for mouse movements, it's not something he's going to fix. It's something he's going to get the JQ or the QT Q group to take a look at. Is that right? Well, he is the person that does most of the work on JQT, so he is essentially the JQT group. <laughs> okay. No, but 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 is it an underlying QT problem? It's, I think it's related to, it's, it's, it's a subscription problem. The, the, in, in the event model for JQT, you have to subscribe to an event to get the event. And I think it's, it's just a configuration problem that mm, baked okay. into the binary. Okay. Well, there might be, you know, QT problems as well, but yeah. that, saying, that, he, he could, he could add an event if yeah. he wants. Okay. Yeah. And and think, since that's I, an expected event, I don't think that would break anything. <laughs> well, I, I think I think he can. I haven't looked at the web view yeah, yeah. In, in QT to ensure that it's exporting the event. But if it is, then it's a simple problem. If it's not, then it becomes a, a, a deeper problem. And we may not, you know, who knows where it's going to go. Yeah. Right. Well, Bob, that's all I've got. So 